Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Levente Gulacci. I'm a fifth year medical and a fifth year senior student here at Saga University. During my most recent semester, I had the opportunity to take a peek into the clinical practice. So I would like to start my presentation with a case report. Imagine the following situation. You are a doctor on duty on the emergency room and your patient is a four to four year old male with ongoing urinary tract infection. His general practitioner has started antibiotics, but it was ineffective. The lower abdominal compl uh, complaints are still persist, so he's presented to you. In the emergency room, we use the technique called uh, ABCD to examine patients, where A stands for airways, B stands for breathing, C stands for circulation, and D stands for others. The patient had free airway, rapid breathing, uh, lower blood pressure, and was conscious and alert. So you will order an extensive blood test and an abdominal uh, ultrasound. Then a few time later, the radiology department calls the emergency room. The patient's condition got critical unsuccessful resuscitation. The patient passes away one and a half hour after admission. Considering all this information, the question arises, what happened? Uh, I have brought this case for a reason because the patient had sepsis, which is characterized by dynamic changes, where the initial phase is uh, mainly led by hyperinflammation and hyperdynamia, and suddenly the turntables and the body collapses. By definition, sepsis is a dysregulated host response to infection where several organ systems are damaged, leading to a life-threatening condition. The therapy is mainly supportive, and uh, you have to start with administering uh, fluid. After this, uh, find the origin of the infection and take a sample for it. After that, you can start the antibiotic treatment. If the patient requires respiratory support, you can start oxygen or consider intubation. If the blood pressure is still low, you must use um, drugs, medication to elevate the blood pressure because the patient is in septic shock. But how does an infection cause multi-organ failure? There are several different pathways, but I would like to highlight a few of them. Impairment of microcirculation, the mitochondrial dysfunction, and cellular immune response. These pathomanisms work hand in hand, reinforcing each other, leading to an organ failure. Uh, there's an easy, quick way to get a, an information about your patient's condition, and this is called the Sequential Organ Failure Assessment, also known as SOFA scoring system. This is, first you have to evaluate the consciousness of your patient, check his uh, respiratory rate, and measure the blood pressure. These three parameters give you the quick SOFA score, where the patient scores at least two in any combination and have a history of inflammation, you have to start the protocol I have mentioned before. You can add a quick blood test, uh, arterial blood test to this uh, picture to get an information about your, the patient's peripheral oxygenation. After that, the patient is stable, and then the blood test results will come back with the information about the liver function, coagulation, and kidney function. All of these information combined will give you the full picture of your patient's condition. Uh, and uh, during sepsis, the um, oxygen dynamic uh, changes will occur. First, oxygen consumption is elevated, then oxygen, del oxygen delivery will be followed. When the micro and uh, systemic circulation is ex are exhausted, Oxygen delivery will be dropping, followed by oxygen consumption because of the mitochondrial dysfunction. You can investigate the microcirculation, we investigate the microcirculation with incidental dark field imaging technique or IDF, uh, which highlights the hemoglobin inside red blood cells and we can check the blood flow. Uh, oxygen consumption can be measured with this Ouroboros machine where we use complex one and complex two coupled oxidative phosphorylation measurements. So going to the bacteria, uh, mitochondrium, we all have heard the term mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell, but what does it really mean? 
uh, from the inner matrix, uh, from the mitochondrial matrix, uh, electrons will travel through the inner membrane of the mitochondrium to the complex form, uh, which will uh, increase the proton, uh, protons inside the intermembrane space. Uh, these electrons will be used to create H2O from protons and uh, molecular oxygen. The inner um, proton concentration will travel back to the mitochondrial matrix and this driving force uh, will create ATP from ADP. Although this is a simplified version of the uh, total picture, but uh, uh, I can recommend you to remember the name uh, Vera Adam. You will use her uh, chemistry book in a few years. And the uh, immune system has two main parts, the innate and the adaptive immunity. Innate immunity cells are neutrophils, basophils, uh, azonophils, and uh, nergranocytes and monocytes. Adaptive immunity cells are T and B lymphocytes. During an acute inflammation, such as sepsis, the, immune, uh, the innate immunities, uh, neutrophil granocytes, will play the most important role. Uh, the neutrophil granocytes will detect the presence of the bacterium and through several uh, different enzymatic reactions, we release their uh, DNA into the extracellular space. This is imaginable like a spider connecting spider web, which is composed of extracellular DNA and uh, enzyme complexes. Uh, this is a special type of cell called netosis. It has its beneficial effects, such as binding uh, and eliminating pathogens, but it's a double-edged sword. It increases the risk of organ damage. Um, the foundational standards of the animal experiments were set by uh, Russell and Birch in the, large, uh, in the late 1950s. Um, and these, over the, these standards over the years have developed into the three R's. These are replace, reduce, and refine. Replace advocates to use to do tests without the need of an animal. Reduce means to minimize the number of the required animals. And refine, if you are using uh, animals for your experiments, try to minimize the distress of them. Uh, so we have set our goals to create a clinically compatible sepsis model with a huge transla clinical translational potential, and we explore new therapeutic options targeting the microcirculation, mitochondria, and the net formation. Uh, while considering the three R's, especially <coughs> clinically relevant healthcare. So we have created a sepsis model, which is a polymicrobial infection, where we use uh, administer fluid replacement, analgesia and anesthesia on respirated animals. While monitoring the uh, animals, we have to adapt the clinical relevance of a scoring system, and we have created it especially for, uh, specifically for rats. And this is called the rat organ failure assessment parameters, which consist of respiration, circulation, metabolism, kidney and liver function monitoring. Uh, for the microcirculation, we can investigate with IDF technique, one of the side of the coin, the uh, oxygen, oxygen delivery. And the other side of the coin is um, uh, by investigating mitochondrial respiration, uh, respiration, we get the oxygen consumption. Netosis, uh, as I have mentioned, it's like a spider web. We can investigate directly with uh, fluorescence microscopy in vivo, or we can replace the animal models with cell cultures. And a quick recap of my presentation. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition. Uh, animal experiments are strictly regulated. The three R's, Micro, uh, microcirculation is a determining factor in oxygen consumption. Mitochondrion is a powerhouse of the cell. And netosis is like a connecting spider web. And a take home message from me would be the protomonism of sepsis is unknown. So there is an increasing need for researchers and researches in the clinical and the clinical field. 
And I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would like to thank the co-workers of mine in the Institute of Surgical Research, which you can visit tomorrow if you are willing to. And thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Levente, for this very nice presentation.